Tam, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Bob? Pretty good. I thought maybe we'd go through uh, board handling today, but before we got into that, I thought you'd help remind me and everybody else about your credentials. All right. Well, I have uh, 25 years of experience in the industry, mostly uh, building circuit boards. My background is very heavy into the rework and repair, and a lot of training experience also. I am currently a master instructor in a lot of the IPC certifications. Great. You know, what? one of the areas that um, I get questions on all the time from clients is this whole issue of board handling. We get recommendations and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through the IPC A610, this one um, chart in here, table 3.4, and kind of get your take on it based on all your experience you have. So the first item here says something about keeping your workstations neat and clean. So based on your experience, kind of how do, how do you, what do you tell people to do there? Well, I basically tell people, you know, you've got to get all your shavings, your solder debris, uh, you know, the things that build up on your workstation. It, it, they will build up, it's normal. But clean it periodically, at least once every, when you go to break, clean it before you go to break, every couple hours, so you're not transferring uh, FOD for, for an object debris onto your boards or your assemblies. So what's the weirdest FOD that you ever saw in your in your vast experience in the EMS businesses that you work in? Some of it's unidentifiable. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do have a good story. We, um, we had, a, where I worked, there was formal coating area came out and they were blacklighting the workstations of the assembly area because they said we were leaving FOD on the boards. We couldn't really see anything on our workstations, they were clean. After a little bit of investigation, we discovered that there was a Christmas party that was uh, break time. They were having a Christmas lunch and they were all wearing Santa Claus hats oh. with sparklies on them. So they actually took the hats off before they went back to production, but the sparklies came out of their hair into their conformal coating. <laughs> and it wasn't going anywhere. So Tammy, one of the other things that's mentioned in this chart is the minimization of handling. How, how do you tell people you know, to use that as, as a principle? Yeah, we want to handle as least as possible. And we have racking, we have you know, ways to transport product that is safer than just handling it. When you do handle it, you want to handle by board edges. Some of our taller profile components can get damaged pretty easy with just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of force. So you want to handle as least as possible and very gentle. So this is a question I get all the time. To use gloves or not use gloves, what kind of gloves? So how, what do you advise people in terms of gloves? Some companies require the use of gloves, and then you would have to use them, and change them quite regularly, at least every break. Uh, if you're not required to wear gloves, then some people still prefer to because of the lead. Mm. And if you do, you still want to handle it carefully, and by board edges, even if you're wearing gloves, because you can contaminate your gloves, touching your hand or oh, your face, okay. epoxies, adhesives, uh, fluxes. So you can easily contaminate the assembly even if you were wearing gloves. Hmm. Okay, so, so it depends is the answer. Right, yeah, it depends. Tammy, sometimes I, I go into places, especially in the winter time, especially in the great north where we live, and people love these lotions, right? They go around and they have their favorite smell. So what do you, what do you advise companies in terms of lotions? Companies need to provide a special lotion that would not have silicone in it because silicone is dangerous to the electronic assemblies. Now, the pretty smelling hand creams that we have at home, they are very pretty smelling, they make our hands very soft, but most of them have silicone in them. Mm. So we shouldn't be wearing hand creams from home. So uh, if, if you're doing lots of assemblies at the workstation, how do you suggest that the boards rest on the workstation when they're not in use? We should never stack our assemblies one on top of another. They should all individually be setting, and when we're not working on them, they should be in a, an acceptable storage container. But we never want to stack our assemblies on top of each other because we can badly damage them. Um, 
components, boards, uh, scratches, and or totally destroy it. Are there any special racks that you recommend or older or you know, what do you what kind do you recommend there? There's so many different varieties and it really depends on the board. Because if you've got a lot of components along the board edge, you really don't want to put them in a, a fixture that where you have to stack them on end. Because okay. you can easily damage the components on the board edge. Sure. Then I put them on a tray. So it, it really depends on your assembly. Final question, maybe one that doesn't come from this chart, Tammy, but that I asked all the time. So when you're moving boards around in an assembly area, like from one station to the other, or from the station to shipping, what's the right way to do that? It's the protective environment or work area. Uh, they can actually be handled without being in an enclosure. If you've got your static flooring, and if you're wearing your static safe equipment, your shoe straps, you can actually walk around with them. Hmm. But if you're not in a static safe work area, they need to be in ESD protective enclosures. Hmm. Now they can be boxes, bags, um, totes, okay. but they have to be inside enclosed okay. to be protected. So I can't walk around with the boards and the boxes with the box cover open. Right. Or another violation that people do quite often is they'll take that safe ESD static shielding bag and instead of putting it in the bag, they use the bag like a potholder. <laughs> and they walk around with the board like a potholder. Yeah. It is totally unprotected. Actually, it's not even protected by you anymore because you're not touching it. Huh. So it's very unsafe that way. So any other, you know, gotchas or things that you see all the time in a production environment in terms of board handling mistakes people are making? Yeah, they'll take those same bags or some of their anti-static materials, the pink materials, and they'll lay it right on the surface of their workbench, their grounded workbench. And then they'll put their assembly over that. It's not grounded anymore. Okay. They just put an insulator between their grounded workbench. And that's common throughout the industry. So some of them, we got some bad habits for ESD. Well, good thing we've had this chance to help you clarify how to handle boards in this session, and I look forward to talking to you in the next session. All right. Thanks a lot, Bob.